obstruction, we all know what an obstruction is. It's something we don't want to hit. Now there's a definition which gives you a minimum size of what you don't want to hit. So a laser sailing up to a mooring ball, let's say, will she, when she is one hull length away from that obstruction, will she have to make a substantial alteration in course? What's substantial? general consensus is that she would have to turn more than 10 degrees. So for a laser, which is all of 14 feet long, this obstruction would have to be five foot at its widest point or larger for it to qualify as an obstruction that she would have to take substantial action to avoid. Zone. We've had mark room. Now we've got zone. It went from two hull lengths around to three hull lengths around. It's not just that as you're approaching it, it's half again bigger. The entire volume that this now covers is two and a quarter times larger than the old circle that we dealt with in the past. But here's where there's a big change. Under the old rules, you were about to round, but you were definitely about to round when you were at two hull lengths. So if two boats, like two catamarans that are making 30 knots apiece, are whipping it at a mark, they were about to round quite some distance away and they had to plan for it. Now, this is a line in the water. At three hull lengths, it turns on. You step away from three hull lengths or out of the influence of the mark, it turns off. There is no middle ground anymore. There's no finagling. Three hull lengths plus minus dead. Oh, another thing. You're only in the zone if part of your hull is in the zone. Don't think about letting the spinnaker out. That's not part of it. It's part of the hull now. It's also based on the size of the boat that's closest to the mark. So if you have a large boat and a small boat, the larger boat that's closer defines it. The larger boat is behind, the boat that's closer that may be smaller defines where the zone is. Exoneration. Under the old rules, we had rules that turned on and off. We don't have that anymore. You now can get in the zone, break a rule, port, starboard, windward, leeward. But if you were entitled to mark rooms, you can get exonerated. You can't be penalized and thrown out for having broken that rule. So it's basically it's the same thing we had before. We're just saying it a different way. Which another big change. Cruising boats sailing along on starboard, you come up at them on port. You force them to get out of your way. One of your competitors who sees this can now protest you. Previously, you could only be protested by the race committee or the jury based on a report, so it was very difficult. Now it's much easier. So if there is a barge, Tug pulling a barge, and you force him to have to back down so you can get across, you can be protested as well as run under the water by the barge. So, <laughs> same tack, proper course has changed. We've eliminated the old favorite 17.2. 17.2 was two boats typically running downwind and Red gets within two hull lengths of the green boat that's clear ahead, goes to steer to get on inside of him. When they head down to the mark, which is way the blaze is downwind, green can't do anything to prevent him from doing that. Gone. Red steers down, green can go down, red goes more, green can keep going, sailing by the lee, whatever they can do until there's an overlap. 
Once there's an overlap, Green's then forced to sail proper course. This change is actually reflecting what we do all the time anyway. Basically, 17.2 was ignored, so now we're just scrubbing it completely. Section C, at marks or obstructions, still doesn't apply at a starting line where the starting pin and the committee boat are surrounded by navigable water. Rule 18 now applies at all marks. Rule 19 applies at obstructions. And um, continuing obstructions that are also marks of the course. So if the course is to go around an island, then that's a continuing obstruction. It's a large body of water. You have to get out around a point of land. That's a continuing obstruction. 18 turns off, 19 turns on. 18 has a number of conditions that you have to achieve before 18 will turn itself on. The first one is that the boats involved all have to be leaving the mark to the same side. So now if you have boats from two different races, these guys are rounding it this way, this cruising division's rounding it the other way, the racing rules turn off. They have nothing to do with each other in this as far as 18 is concerned. It then drops back to Port Starlet, when we're delivered. To also trigger this, one boat has to be in the zone. Her hull has to penetrate that boundary line. The rule does not apply when two boats are on opposite tacks or when one of the boats is going to have to tack to round. It doesn't apply if one boat is approaching the mark and another one is leaving the mark. And it doesn't apply if the mark's a continuing obstruction as we set a point of land or something. Boats that are overlap, we'll stick with the windward mark first, everything remains the same. Inside has to give room to outs outside has to give room to inside. I can do this. Um, if the boats are overlapped, when the first boat hits, or we switch it the other way, red hits the zone, she's got to give room to green and stay out of her way. If there's a doubt as to whether or not an overlap got established or was broken, it's assuming that the prior condition is still in effect. So if you have red coming up here, screaming, no overlap, no overlap, no overlap, and green saying, no, I just got it. Mm, onus is going to be on green to prove it. If they've been overlapped all this time and red punches up and says no overlap, the onus is going to be on red to prove that she broke the overlap, which is the same game that we've always had.